it is just about my bad habits to be honest and how one leads to the other the which leads to the i feel like they all bad habits are all connected yeah and they usually start with one beer and then it all goes down <laughs> just uh, to get started i just want to be uh, uh checking your memory a little bit uh, earlier this year you you hit 30 and now you're saying you're recording uh, or releasing your first new music in four years and i'm just wondering if you maybe be forgotten a little about your Christmas presents for your, uh, your I said, fans. I said my, my first solo single. So um, uh, Afterglow wasn't a single. It was just a song. It came out midweek on a, like 4 p.m. Like there was no, <laughs> I, I wasn't doing tons of interviews. I didn't do like a big budget music video. I wasn't, I wasn't promoting it. It was just literally for the fan base. There you go. So this, yeah. I said, I, I worded it carefully. I was like my first solo. <laughs> Song yeah. or single? single? Just, just teasing you, just teasing you. Uh, you are releasing uh, new music and uh, starting, I guess, a, a sort of new era for you. Uh, how does that make you feel right now? I'm excited, but I'm very nervous. I think, you know, I've been away for a while. I'm also like, I'm not 21 anymore. I'm not like, uh, what's the word? Like... <laughs> not down with the kids, but you know, like there's, there's <laughs> every year there's a new artist that comes out that's more exciting. So my, sure. my career now is sustaining what I have rather than like being fresh or new again, you know? Yeah. And are you as excited as every time when you release new music? Yeah. Yeah. I think I got quite complacent in my early twenties because it was, you know, everything I put out it seemed to do well. And I feel like now it's been so long since I've put anything out. I'm like the opposite of complacent. I'm like really, really nervous and grateful that like you're even considering interviewing <laughs> me, you know? So I'm just, I'm, I, I'm, in a, I'm in a good place with the excitement for the single. Is it also intimidating still to put your, your new music out there? Yeah, because you're essentially going, you create something that you love and then you go, Oh, I hope you guys like it too. And then if they don't, it's crushing on your um, confidence because you go, "Oh my god, I liked it. I, why, why doesn't why doesn't anyone else like it?" So I hope people yeah. like this one. But is that is that really true? Because everybody seems to always like what you put out there. You only hear about the ones that people like, though. <laughs> There's loads of songs that people don't like that you don't you just wouldn't hear about because they wouldn't be played on the, the radio. It's like your um. Uh, what what is it? Uh, success has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. Yeah. Okay. But as an artist uh, with great success, and you've had a lot of successes, do you sometimes risk, you know, taking your success for granted, your fans for granted, or is it something you have to think about? I've never taken my fan base for granted because I think I I was I was a fanatical fan in my youth. Like I used to do. I used to be a street teamer, so I used to go and collect emails for the band that I liked in the queue. So I used to turn up to the queue before the gig of these bands and I would have a sheet of paper and I would collect emails. And at the end of the gig, I would give that to their tour manager and that would be their, their mailing list. This was, I'm talking like 17 years ago or something like that. So, uh, and I've waited outside at the gates for hours and hours and hours to meet my favorite band. So I understand being a fan. So I'd never take my fan base for granted, but I think with, um, with music, yeah, I think you kind of, Every now and then you 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 do take it for granted because it, it's 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 an everyday thing where you're you know you'd play an amazing show somewhere and the next night you'd go and play an amazing show the night before and you kind of forget the path it, that you took to get there because it becomes the new normal to play sold out shows but actually you need to look back at ten years ago when you were playing to no one and realize that that it, everything leads up to a point and there's uh, steps that you have to take basically and just remind yourself of the steps. So a new single coming out very, very soon, Bad Habits. Uh, tell us about the song. What, what What's the song like and uh, what's it about? Uh, the song is upbeat and dark with a lot of bass in it. And it is my first time I've made a dance tune. It is just about my bad habits, to be honest, and how one leads to the other, the which leads to the, I feel like they all, bad habits are all connected. Yeah. So they usually start with one beer and then it all goes down. <laughs> Oh, 
Thank but you. when you write a song like Bad, Bad Habits, do you know this is the end, the, the final product? Do you envision the final product? Or do you sit with your guitar and then it kind of develops out? I usually write a song very quickly and, yeah. and then I vocal it. And then it's like months and months of production getting it completely spot on. But the song, the song was there from the first moment. And the vocals that you hear in the song are the vocals that I recorded on the SM7 mic that, that day. But um, the production, we probably finished like a week ago. Okay. And you, you're not afraid of uh, collaborating with rappers or people that put in garage beats and uh, jungle beats and whatever, uh, trying to do all kinds of different stuff. Was this a, a song that uh, moved a lot of directions along, along the way? Yeah, I feel like I have like boxes that I need to tick with with my album uh, for my for me and for my fan base. I feel like if I didn't have love songs on there, people would be like, what are you doing? Like, this is why we like you. So there's like boxes <laughs> I need to tick. And then there's like this kind of box that just says unknown where yeah. it can be anything and you can try out any sound. And I feel like I'm uh, as a musician, it's my job to keep trying different things. And as I said, like sometimes they don't work and sometimes they really like, I didn't think shape of you would work at all. That was like completely different for me. And yeah. it's now the biggest hit of my career. And like that, I have to admit that I was wrong there, but in, you know, situations like this, like I think that bad habits is different and I hope people like it. And you've worked with uh, Fred again. You worked with Fred again also on the uh, number six collaborations project and uh, Johnny McDade. He was with you on Shape of You, among other songs. Why do you think your work together is, well, working so well? Because they're good people. They're good people. There's lots of talented people in the world, but there's not a lot of talented, good people. Like, like they're actually, they're genuinely, like Johnny McDade is the godfather to my daughter. Like, he's like is a beautiful soul and Fred is a beautiful soul. And like, if I didn't make music with them, they would still be my best friends and I would still hang out with them like every day. And I think that there's a connection like that. Like I've worked with a lot of people that I clicked with musically, but I didn't click with personally. And I think you need to have both to really make great music. And do they also push you like you want to push yourself? Yeah, they do. They do. I get very frustrated sometimes because we all <laughs> know each other so well that we're all very honest and some, sometimes I can be a bit of a dick. <laughs> okay. And why is it important for you? Because that's what you said about this new song. Why is it important for you to push yourself and move in new directions and try new stuff as an artist? Because if I made my album plus for my second album, no one would be interested anymore. If I was then now on my f f fifth album, fifth record, and I was still making the same thing that I was making 10 years ago, no, no one would be interested. Like there's got to be points in your career. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm Bob Dylan and I'm not saying the Beatles, but Bob Dylan picked up an electric guitar and made a completely different era that people hated at the time, but now look back at as his classic era and the Beatles, every single album, they reinvented themselves. You know, it's uh, I think you need to take, take music and it isn't a lineal thing. It isn't like I am this genre. It's the genre is music or, or good music and bad music. And there's two genres and you just create whatever you want to create. And I guess it won't stop there. What else is uh, cooking in the uh, Ed Sheeran music kitchen right now? Uh, the album. The album's done. And then there's a hell of a lot of music after that. But uh, the album will come end of the year. And it's exciting. <laughs>